Hello everyone, my name is Omar and I'm the co-founder of EasyPanel, which is an online flow cytometry panel design platform that is automated uh, and that is being licensed to companies and institutions. It is hosted at flow-cytometry.net. Anyone can access that and can go to this tab called EasyPanel, uh, where they would have to log in uh, or create an account. And based on their institution, they would find a list of cytometers uh, that are registered for uh, their company or institution, like here for Baylor College of Medicine at Texas. I'm going to show today how to design a traditional flow cytometry panel on the uh, Symphony A5, for example. Uh, so people can select whichever cytometer they are interested in. There are uh, two different options here. I'm going to stick to the one by default and we'll explain this second one later, but they essentially will see uh, the different lasers and channels or filters registered uh, for their cytometer configuration. They can then press next and add the different antigens uh, of the corresponding to the panel that they're trying to design. So for the sake of time, I have already added here uh, antigens corresponding to a T-cell panel. Uh, these are 15 different antigens. And as you may have noticed, there are a few options or functionalities that appear uh, for each and every antigen, like the expression level that we can select. Uh, sometimes it's there by default, or alternatively, if it's unspecified, we can select it or we can specify it. We have to specify the species reactivity, whether it's human, mouse. We can uh, set different antigens on the dumb channel. Um, and then we can mark different antigens as co-expressed on the same cell population like I'm doing here. Uh, this is not mandatory though, uh, but you can specify different antigens on co-expressed antigen group one, group two, and group three, each one being a different cell population. Again, you don't have to do this. This is only optional and for fine tuning. Last is select fluorochrome. You don't have to be designing panels from scratch. In case you have already a few products in your fridge uh, that you had already purchased, you do not want to re-design um, them. You can always select and say, well, I want to have CD45 for, uh, RA with FITSI. I want to have CD69 with APC, etc., etc. And then just maybe leave one or two or more antigens unspecified fluorochromes. In other words, you don't have to be using Easy Panel. To design panels from scratch. You can already have a partially designed panel and uh, request the platform to uh, specify or optimize the remaining unspecified antigens for you. Anyways, there is a small question mark right next to each field that explains what this represents and how exactly it impacts panel design. I'm going to click next. Here it's asking us about the viability die. There are two options, but it's the same principle as before. You either let the tool determine and optimize a viability die for you. Alternatively, if you are already working with one, you can choose it here um, among an exhaustive list of viability dies. I'm going to click next. And we have a proprietary uh, flow cytometry panel design algorithm that takes into account uh, if quite a few different cr criteria for panel design, such as minimizing spillover between the different fluorochromes that are suggested uh, matching antigens to fluorochromes in an optimized way, uh, such that, um, you know, uh, in order to take into account the antigen's expression level, take into account the antigen's co-expression profile, but also trying to find products that are commercially available. So in the space of less than a minute or a minute and a half, we end up with a table that looks like this, including the laser and the filter or channel of our configuration, of our instruments configuration. The list of antigens we just entered, and then fluorochromes that were automatically suggested in an optimized way, each fluorochrome for a specific antigen. The last column is uh, uh, product suggestions, commercial product suggestions uh, for each um, product within our panel, including the vendor, the name of the clone, the isotype, and then the link to go ahead and purchase the product directly from the vendor's page. In the bottom, we have an automated spectrum viewer that shows you uh, a visual representation of the normalized emission spectra of the different fluorochromes. And this is in each laser. Uh, you can zoom in, move to the right, move to the left. Um, you can also export the panel as a CSV or Excel to share it with your colleagues. You can also save it to your account. 
um, just as I've done here. Um, you can, in case you would like to fine tune the panel, you can hit this customize by manual panel builder. A new tab will open and you would see all the commercial products that are available on the market. And in case, for example, for some reason, you do not like the suggestion of CD4 BV605, you can remove the BV605 and you will see available the different commercial products. Uh, here it's telling you that to get to this panel, the tool tested uh, in silico, of course, this large number of panels and computed every time what we call the total spillover score. Again, it's defined here. Um, and it's essentially just the sum of uh, the spillover scores um, within this square matrix, the spillover score corresponding to the different fluorochromes in the suggested panel. Uh, so we're trying to minimize that. This is part of the panel design criteria. Anyways, there is a small question, um, chat button here. If you have any questions or comments, please let us know uh, and we will make more detailed videos uh, on our channel. Thanks so much.